Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Newton OKYA and this is Prime Newtons. Please if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe today and hit the notifications bell so you can get the notifications when I upload new videos because I'm going to do a lot more frequent videos this time. School is starting back up again and we've got to learn. Okay, so let's go into this. The only thing that's going to be new today from my previous videos is the introduction of the negative sign. And I'm just going to answer the question from the beginning. So if you know what to do with the rest of it, just go ahead and stop watching. Okay, because this negative sign is going to be important when you take the square root of a number. And let me explain that to you. So let's say you take the square root of 9. The natural thing for you to gravitate toward is that the answer is 3. But let's not forget that the square root of 9 is the absolute value of 3, which means it is either positive 3 or negative 3. It's either of these two, depending on the situation you were in, you're in. So in this case, how do we know if we're going to go positive or negative? Well, it actually tells us, okay, that x is approaching negative infinity. So x is a very negative number. Okay, so by the time you take the square root of what's in here, your mind should tell you that it's going to be negative. You won't take the positive option, you'll take the negative option. That's the, that's the only thing you need to note here. Well, the rest of it is up to you. But if you want to see how I do this, why don't you stay with me? Okay, uh, the first thing you would do is to create rational terms in the problem you're trying to solve because you want to introduce infinity so that you can get something divided by infinity so your answer will be zero. Okay, you don't want to have zero under and zero on top because if you do that right now, that's what you're going to get. But we don't want to get that. What you want to do is to divide this by something and your best choice is the highest denominator, okay? The denominator with the highest exponent is what you want to do. So let's do that. So I'm going to write this as the limit as x approaches negative infinity. I'm going to divide everything by this. So which is going to be the square root of 9x to the 6th minus x divided by x cubed divided by x cubed plus 6 divided by x cubed. So because I divided both top and bottom by the same thing, I have not changed the question. But now I have given myself um, a way out of this um, situation. So at this point, um, you, you can break up this, the denominator, you can break this up into x cubed over x cubed plus 6 over x cubed. Okay, that's allowed in algebra, but you cannot break this up like this because these two are bound together by the square root sign. So for you to, be, for you to um, break these two up, you have to sneak this x cubed under the square root sign and that makes it possible for you to uh, do. And how do you do that? Let me show you what you have to uh, look at. Look at this expression, square root of 3, well, let's make it square root of 9 so we can get an answer. So square root of 9 divided by 3. Well, we know our answer is going to be um, plus or minus 3. Okay, I'm just going to write absolute value of 3 divided by 3. Let me just write what everybody gets. Okay, I'm just going to write 3 over 3. Your answer is 1. Okay, but instead of me, be, this is easy because I know the square root of 9. What if I didn't know the square root of 9? Or I didn't know the square root of this number? So another way to do this is to, is to write square root of 9 divided by 3 and then push this 3 under the square root sign. It becomes square root of 9 divided by, write this as a square root. What will 3 be? 3 will be the square root of 9. Ah, we can as well just write it as this, 9 over 9. Okay, this is allowed and that gives you the square root of 1. 
So you can see, for you to push a number under the square root sign, you have to square that number and then it will stay under. So for us to push this under the square root sign, I have to square this. So x to the third will now become x to the sixth. So I can rewrite this as 9x to the sixth over x to the sixth minus, and then I can break this down also x into x to the sixth. So this has simplified our problem and we can get much simpler answers. So, oh, I forgot to write the limit sign. Well, don't ever forget that. This will be equal to the limit of x as it approaches negative infinity. Don't forget to write that. So at this point, it's gonna be the limit of x as it approaches negative infinity, negative infinity of, this is where you need to be super careful. You see, when you take the square root of anything, the square root of five, or let's, let's take a four, the square root of four, there's a natural tendency to write two because most of the time, the numbers we deal with are positive numbers, natural numbers, okay? But this question specifically says that x is approaching negative infinity, which gives you the impression that x is a negative number, okay? When you square a negative number, like negative two, and then you take the you, you get two, you get four. When you now take the square root of four, you're supposed to get negative two, but naturally we don't remember that negative two is one of the options, we just say the answer is two, but we have changed it. So when you square negative infinity and you take back the square root, what you've actually done is you're trying to take the negative sign away, don't do that. You have to recognize that x is approaching negative infinity, so x is a negative number. So when you take a square root here, just remember the negative sign, okay? It's gonna be a negative result. In order to not forget, this is the trick, just put a negative sign out there as soon as you cancel these out. So I'm gonna write negative and what's left, these two will cancel out. I'll have nine minus, this will take this out if you have one over x to the fifth divided by, and then this takes this out, you have one plus, and that's a six over x to the third. We're almost done, okay. So at this point, you just need to substitute infinity in there, okay? Some people will tell you, you're putting negative infinity, so change the sign to positive. It doesn't make any difference, because you're gonna keep on, this is gonna give you zero, this is gonna be zero. Remember, if you divide anything by infinity, your answer is zero. So put infinity here, you're gonna end up with negative square root of nine plus zero, or nine minus zero, whichever you choose, okay? And then this will be one, plus this is gonna be zero, okay? I just wanna leave this as negative, okay? Since this is zero, there's no positive or negative zero, so it's the same thing. So you end up with negative square root of nine over one. So, see, now you don't have to be reminded that the number is negative because we already put the negative sign here, okay? So that's all you have to do. What's the square root of nine? It's three, so it's negative three divided by 1, which is equal to negative 3. So, the limit of this function, as x approaches negative infinity, will be negative 3. So when you plot the graph, what it just tells you, when you plot the graph, the farther away you move from here, and you're going this way, you find out that the line is getting close to negative 3. So let's say this, this is the negative 3 limit, this line will be something that goes like this. It should be going closer and closer and closer and closer to negative three, but it will never reach negative three. Maybe someday it might, but you never know. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. My name is Newton Okewoy. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.